everyone. Welcome everyone to another Observability Clinic, another Dynatrace Apps Spotlight episode. Today, we put the spotlight on the infrastructure and ops app. And uh, for me, or with me today, is Lori. Lori, thank you so much for being here. How are you? Oh, I'm, I'm really well. Thank you, Andy, for having this opportunity to talk about the InfraOps application. So I'm really excited. Yeah, same here. So we have announced a lot of apps recently. And as we said, if you want to put a spotlight on all of those apps. Lori, without further ado, please do me a favor. Give us a quick overview of what the app is all about. And then show us this thing in uh, in real life because this is the most exciting part of these presentations absolutely andy let's let's go for it so hello everybody so we launched the infrastructure operations application in perform and i'm, I'm pretty excited about it because we have a great future for improving the infra infra observability a lot and basically why we are doing this we are really want to use the power of Grail to visualize the infrastructure uh, in a way that we haven't done before. And we, we have launched this application and we have a huge plan for it to also improve it further based on your feedback. But without further ado, I think we'll basically let go to the live demo, Andy, shall we? I think we should, yeah, please. Great, great. So I'm gonna switch now to the, app, uh, to the demo. So obviously, once you are on the latest latest uh, Dynatrace, then basically you can find the application either by searching for infrastructure, or it's also now a built-in application in the launcher. So you can just find this mm -hmm. infrastructure operations uh, 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 logo. So once we click on that one, basically then it will uh, load your environment. And typically we have introduced a new feature here, which is we display your data centers. We typically just listed hosts in the second generation, but on third generation now, we have this new concept of data centers. Mm -hmm. And how we are doing this, we are doing this basically using either the cloud regions, we have the AWS, Azure, and G uh, Google here, but we also uh, use the built-in Dynatrace geolocation site mm -hmm. uh, feature here, the group uh, hosts into data centers. And, and why we are doing this in, in a large environment, the idea is that we can follow the red so you can quickly see which areas of your environment need attention. And let's dive now a little bit deeper. We can see that we have 11 uh, problems open in this data center. So then we can simply dive deeper into that data center and displace immediately all the hosts uh, sorted by the open problems. We can see that this host now is has most open problems. We can see also immediately that its CPU saturation is quite high and its memory is not yet maxed out, but it's close to be maxed out. So there certainly is a, is a problem here. Mm -hmm. And the idea in, in this new environment is that you can quickly sort out your host based on the CPU saturation. Mm -hmm. So you can identify you know, the hosts uh, that are maxing out the CPUs. And the great thing about this tool also is in a very large environment, you can add, for example, you can add filters here and, and, and search for host based on tags. Mm -hmm. So if you attack your load balancers or other parts of your, or your database clusters, you can just simply put the tag in here and you only see those hosts. The same is with host groups and, you know, and we can use also all kinds of other filters here. But the idea is that you can really quickly isolate and, and search for the specific areas of your environment that you're interested in. And you can see a really quick overview of how the, how those hosts are doing. Mm -hmm. Laurie, I, I really just want to jump in here because I think this is really nicely done, especially all this data, right, I assume comes from both our agents as well as our integrations that we have with the uh, different cloud vendors and um, also the VMware, I think I saw in there. I think this also goes nicely hand in hand with the discovery app that we recently introduced. So if you have an environment and you want to get broader adoption of Dynatrace, you can use that app. And then this view here is really nice. And especially I like it that um, you can then sort it by priority because everybody has a different priority and what they want to focus on, I guess, right? Uh, active problems, the CPU saturation, the memory saturation or disk, and then also these search capabilities uh, make it really easy, especially with the tags. 
they're very powerful because we automatically pull in and I see here on the right side some tags around AWS. So we can easily say, show me all of the instances that were created by a certain Terraform uh, or cloud formation uh, template and, and so on. Yeah. Cool. Wow. Uh, absolutely. And you can quickly also find the host based on their status. Mm -hmm. uh, this is one, one option that uh, uh, you may want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the key things also about the new views is that we can show and hide more columns. Mm -hmm. And it remembers per user also the view. If mm -hmm. you want to specifically uh, see the host group here and you don't, for example, want to see uh, the hypervisor on, or, or, or information, then you can modify the view mm -hmm. uh, to, to fit your needs. That's cool. Yeah, that's helpful. And especially as it's stored by a user. So that means if you have many different team members in your team that take care of infrastructure and operations, everybody can has, have their own little view. Um, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's perfect. So now we can dive a little bit deeper. So obviously you want to know a little bit more about the host that is uh, is, is under under stress. So we can simply click on the, the host name and we open the more information about uh, the host. You can also resize the window so you can see kind of a, uh, more or less information. Mm -hmm. And now you can compare also the hosts. You can you can quickly mm -hmm. select different hosts on the view. And if you have now filtered like based on a tag certain hosts, you can quickly compare them by by clicking through uh, clicking through the hosts. That's nice. Yeah, but, and that, that that view also looks very familiar to what we've done with the Kubernetes uh, app. So that's also, it looks very similar, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so here we have a quick overview of the host and the idea is that we can see quickly the properties of the host. Mm -hmm. You can also search the properties. Uh, we see the tags, uh, what tags uh, uh, the host has and also uh, if the ownership has been defined. Uh, mm -hmm. You can see all that information real quick. And you see, of course, a snapshot of the host health and, and, and what's going on in terms of the, uh, the key health indicators. But then we also have added uh, a new view, which is the host specific technologies view. Um, this relates to the, to the whole environment technologies view, obviously, and which we'll be adding uh, into this app later. And so here you can see how your uh, technologies are doing. So instead of drilling down immediately to the processes, you can see simply by, okay, my Java, you know, is eating this much CPU and memory and et cetera, et cetera. So you see a really good overview of what's going on. Mm -hmm. And in addition to that one, then you can also see uh, which processes or process groups uh, uh, create that technology. And then from there, you can move into uh, immediately to the process view if you want to see the Java. Okay, so we have uh, a Java process here. We click on that one then we can see immediately how uh, that process uh, is uh, doing. It is really good. Cool. This just reminds me. So this this is a really great new way of that replaces the our our old hosts view, our old technology view, our old process view. All of this now in a simple app that allows me to drill down into problematic area where let's say processes are impacting the overall health of a host and then you can very easily go down all the way to the process level. That's really sweet. Yeah, and we have, uh, based on the feedback we've gotten now from all of our users, we have improved the process view now mm -hmm. and it's much easier now also from the uh, process view mm -hmm. to identify exactly which process is doing what. Mm -hmm. And you can also uh, highlight a, a process here quite easily and you can also hide uh, processes from the from this views, which is which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And as before, you can search for certain um, certain uh, a, a technology. Uh, for example, in this case, Go, and you only see uh, uh, that technology. Mm -hmm. And so we built a really kind of a really powerful view to observe the processes and technologies in a way that uh, we mm -hmm. haven't done before. Mm -hmm. Really nice. Um, can I actually quickly ask, I see on that chart, uh, you can obviously switch between uh, the different aggregations like average, and I guess you have the different options like interactively in the chart itself. And there's also yeah. the perfect. And then also there's the three dots next to it. I guess there's some where how we are yeah, nice open a notebook. That means you can say, hey, take this chart, get it into a notebook because I want to maybe do some uh, some diagnostics, some analysis. Maybe there's a problem and I want to do some triaging and then I open up a notebook 
for my triaging session. That's really nice. Absolutely. Every metric chart has now open in notebook mm -hmm. a link, which you can allow us easily then uh, analyze those metrics further. Cool. One key integration probably here worth showing is also the logs integration. Mm -hmm. So we have now pre-made queries now. So if you click on the logs, mm -hmm. you can see that it's, it's suggesting you pre-made qu queries mm -hmm. uh, uh, for that. So you can you can click on those and it immediately you go into this uh, log browser and, mm -hmm. and which you can then modify you further to get more information about uh, about the possible issue. Oh, that's cool. So that means you actually detect certain patterns or like in this case, you know, there's like certain warnings and errors or yeah. he also had the problems and you can say, hey, show me all the logs that belong to that particular pattern that we've detected and then you automatically get that query. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, this helps too. You can see the process group, uh, uh -huh. et cetera, et cetera, where inf more information about uh, the issue. So this is pretty cool. And so it suggests you all the log queries, like for example, here for the problem. So mm -hmm. log for prob this problem, excessive resource usage, and then basically it, it suggests uh, mm -hmm. any important uh, a lock lines around that event. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty, pretty cool. That's pretty cool, yeah. Yeah, so we really want to have more feedback for this app because we obviously improved this all the time now. Uh, so you can click on the question mark here and click on the send feedback uh, link. It mm -hmm. opens a direct link to the community channel. I'm very active there. So you can go there write any feedback and I'll reply to you usually within the week. Mm -hmm. That's that's perfect. Well, Laurie, um, this is, uh, can you do me one more favor because I'm, I'm really fascinated with this. Can you go back to that host? Yeah. So you give me a new nice overview of what is happening on that host, which is great. Uh, you showed us the technologies, the processes, the problems, the logs, Obviously, this also includes vulnerabilities. So for AppSec, we automatically show you if there's any vulnerabilities on here. I think so. Yeah, perfect. Um, also events and metrics. So I see there's like, so there's, it, it's a really nice way on how you're actually pulling all of this data together and then, and then yeah. provide it there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so the metrics, we've combined some of the key uh, mm -hmm. key metrics for the host, which you can mm -hmm. uh, kind of quite easily uh, mm -hmm. then compare and open them in a notebook, which is yeah. key. Yeah, which is key. Perfect. And uh, it's an it's a pre-installed app, you said, so everyone has it by default. That means there's nothing that yeah. needs to be installed. If you have the latest uh, Dynatrace SaaS version, then mm -hmm. you already have it, and you just go to the launcher and then open the application. Cool. Wow. Uh, and just to, to repeat what you just said, folks, if you have feedback, please use the app, provide feedback through the feedback button. I know the team... Uh, is constantly, you know, building new stuff in based on the feedback. And that means, Laurie, I'm pretty sure I will have you back at some point to give an update on the app. But this already... I'd love that. Good. I'd love that because every month we release an updated version now. We are very active on this application now. So we take, our, take account every feedback very seriously and we make sure that our customers will absolutely love this application. Yeah. Well, you did a good job with the first cut array. It, at least from my perspective, this looks very promising and very helpful. Great. All right. With this, Laurie, thank you so much. Anything else? No, I think that's all. I'm looking forward for the feedback through the community. And thank you, Andy. And thank you, everybody, for listening and watching. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.